Hello and welcome to this edition of YPAC CityCast. I'm Randy Beeler. Private donations to the proposed Yakima Central Plaza nearly doubled in the last month of 2015 to almost $4 million. In April of last year, the Plath family of Yakima pledged $2 million to the project as designed by world-renowned landscape architect and Yakima native Catherine Gustafson. Near the end of November, a group of local supporters of the project launched a concerted effort to solicit additional private pledges, and the effort has paid off. Engineering work on the proposed central plaza has been underway for several months and is expected to be completed by early spring. The City Council will then decide what the next steps may be for the plaza, which is designed to be an economic development tool that will continue the revitalization of downtown Yakima. The plaza would be built on land currently used for parking that is located between 2nd Street and 3rd Street, just south of Yakima Avenue and north of Chestnut Avenue. The largest of the most recent pledges is $1 million from Yakima resident Peggy Lewis. B.T. Loftus Ranches and John I. Hawes Incorporated have both pledged $250,000 to the plaza project. Another $100,000 has come from Popoff Incorporated. Combined, 18 other individuals and companies have brought the total pledged amount to just over $3,980,000. Donations to the Central Plaza project can be made online at yakimacentralplaza.com or by contacting the city's economic development manager, Sean Hawkins, by phone at 575-6274 or by email at sean.hawkins at yakimalaw.gov. The Yakima City Council has whittled down the number of executive search firms that it will consider using to find the next Yakima City Manager. From an initial group of 11 firms that submitted proposals, the Council has decided that six companies will continue on in the process. The new Yakima City Council held its first meeting of the year on January 5th. A week before that, what was then the incoming City Council met to go over the 11 proposals it had received and decided that six firms would be interviewed on Tuesday, January 12th. Following those interviews, which will last 15 minutes each, the Council will determine what the next step will be in the selection process. Once an executive search firm is selected, the process of developing a recruiting profile and brochure will begin. The firm selected will seek out interested candidates, conduct initial screenings, further evaluate qualified candidates, and ultimately present the council with a list of finalists who will come to Yakima to be interviewed. The cost of the city manager recruitment will be between $24,000 and about $30,000. The process of recruiting and selecting a new Yakima city manager is expected to take between four and six months. The city of Yakima is about ready to put two former Tiger oil sites on the market. And maybe this time will be the charm as far as finding a company to move the Yakima Visitor Center. With those stories, here's CityCast's Ken Crockett. Thank you, Randy. Buyer interest has been strong for the former Tiger Oil Company property at 24th Avenue and West Knob Hill Boulevard. While no deal has been finalized, city officials do remain optimistic. Yakima purchased the eyesore property along with three other Tiger oil sites in 2014 for $1.3 million. The city plans to recoup its investment by selling the properties after restoration work is finished. Working closely with the State Department of Ecology, the Knob Hill site underwent extensive environmental cleanup last year to fix problems caused by leaking underground fuel tanks from the 1980s. Meanwhile, a second former Taiga Oil site at 1606 East Knob Hill Boulevard is now on the market. The asking price for the property is $450,000. And finally, work is expected to begin this spring on cleaning up another Tiger Bend Mini Mart location at the corner of 56th Avenue and Summit View. Hopefully the third time will be the charm when it comes to moving the Yakima Visitor Information Center closer to downtown. Bids will be open later this month for relocating the building from its current location on Fair Avenue to the corner of 9th Street and Yakima Avenue. Two previous efforts failed to attract any interest in the project. The move is aimed at making it easier for people to find the visitor center, which opened in 2003. Also, the current location will be impacted by future redevelopment to the Cascade Mill site and proposed changes along the freeway. Back to you, Randy. Thank you, Ken. 
When we come back, we'll tell you about some of the dangers that you may face from accumulations of snow and ice on homes and other buildings. You're watching YPAC CityCast. My name is Jack Kurtzinger, and I coach grid kid football, and I teach self-defense. My name's Ryan Pepper, and I coach youth basketball. I'm Jim Moore, and I'm a certified EMT. I'm Elaine Gonzalez, and I'm a police chaplain. What do we have in common? We're all a part of your Yakima Police Department. Be, Be part, part of the solution. solution. This winter has seen more severe weather in Yakima than in recent years. With the buildup of snow and ice on homes, carports, garages, and other structures, the danger of collapse becomes a real possibility. But you can take preventative steps. Here's more on what you can do to avoid serious problems. Thanks, Randy. One thing to think about as the snow piles up is how much is piling up on your roof. Now, most roofs in our area are pitched and can handle the amount of snow load we have to this point but flat roofs like carports, garages, or older or other weaker structures that don't let the melting snow and ice run off can really weigh a roof down and really cause some major damage. Now fresh snow like this is pretty light, but as the snow melts and compacts or freezes, that snow and ice can weigh as much as 25 pounds per square foot, and that's enough to buckle a carport like this, and if it collapsed, it could do major damage or seriously injure someone standing under it. So here's a few tips to keep you and your property safe. First, keep an eye on structures with flat roofs, and if you notice any bowing, bending, or cracking in any of those supporting beams, do not go under them for any reason until you can get the load off of the roof, and call a professional to help if you believe the roof is ready to collapse. Next, try to clear lower, easily accessible edges of snow and ice first, so what does melt can run off of the roof before it freezes again and creates more weight on the roof. Now if it is possible, safely remove some of the snow load with a roof rake or a snow shovel but be very careful and never try to do something like this alone. Remember the snow is slippery and you could fall off of the roof or the ladder. Always remember to put personal safety before property and in the event of an emergency, be sure to dial 911 immediately. Now for more information on how much snow an average roof can handle and more on how to safely remove snow and ice from a structure, visit disastersafety.org and click on the winter weather section. Now Randy, we have had a little warmer weather recently, but a lot of the white stuff is sticking around on some of the roofs around here, and winter is far from over, so it may pile up more before it is. So back to you in the studio. Very important information. Thank you for joining us for this edition of YPAC CityCast. Stay in tune with all that's going on with the city of Yakima by checking out the various media platforms utilized by the city to share information. The City of Yakima website at yakimawa.gov offers up-to-date information about City Council meetings, news events, activities calendars, and other City goings-on. The official City of Yakima Facebook page connects you to the City's social media network in a unique and fun way. And the official City of Yakima Twitter feed provides headline updates no matter where you may be. Visit the City of Yakima website, find us on Facebook, or follow the City on Twitter. We'll see you on the next edition of YPAC CityCast. I'm Randy Beeler. Take care. For more information on YPAC CityCast, call 575-6092.